Let Coach uh, Miles open it up uh, with some comments, and then we'll get Coach DeBoard and Coach Grimes up here uh, quickly after that. Fire away. The, uh, I, I'm, I'm starting this, okay. I, uh, I just want you to know that I really have been chasing Mike DeBoard for about four years, okay. And it just hadn't timed up that we were fortunate enough to, to have him. And, uh, but uh, what he did uh, joining us is going to make our football team much, much stronger. Um, this is a guy that's had a, uh, in his, as an offensive coordinator, he, he put 80 and 33 together. 80 being wins, 33 not. Central Michigan head coach between uh, 2000 and 2003 has coached future NFL Hall of Famers and great, um, uh, uh, great um, quarterbacks. Uh, several have played or will play in the NF in the uh, Super Bowl. Um, you're looking at uh, Greasy's not going to play, but Tom Brady would play, as would um, Drew. Um, Chad Henning. So, um, again, coached in 16 bowl games and more than 40 years of coaching experience. The key piece for, for me is knowing that he will impart team, the feeling of doing something for others, the uh, I have your back team and uh, culture. We want toughness. We want, you know, a, an, a, an excellence that, uh, that depicts our success. And uh, in character, he's got a wonderful family, uh, Deb, two sons, some grandkids. Um, he's a uh, great addition, absolutely a great addition. Uh, to the Jayhawks. So I uh, um, want to switch and kind of talk a little bit about Lee Grimes. Lee Grimes is all decade team at Texas A&M is a, uh, a guy that uh, understands the, the, the uh, development and what goes into developing a student athlete because he was one. And uh, um, he played with and, and coached with Josh Ergel at uh, East Texas Baptist. And uh, what he'll be able to do is impart what will be natural for him, the right steps, the ability to contact and, and focus his eyes on his, con on his target, and he will, he will be special as a teacher because he's played it. So I, uh, um, I think you guys are up for, for the next round. All right, we'll let Coach Miles step aside. We'll bring up Coach DeBoard for uh, any questions that uh, you guys have. Hey, Cody, what's, what's kind of your, your vision, your plan uh, for this offense as you come to take it over? Well, number one is the first thing we have to do is build relationships with our players. Um, you know, I talked to Jalen last night, and uh, I've already started that relationship. But uh, we've got a lot of work to do in that way. Uh, you know, Lee's new. I'm new. Uh, our offense will be somewhat new. And uh, so we got to build the relationships first. And then after that, we'll start building the offense and uh, working on that and putting it together. How familiar uh, were you just coming and getting this job with what, what's already here in Lawrence? I'm sorry? Yeah, sorry. Uh, how familiar um, were you just taking the job here with what's already in Lawrence? Oh, uh, I was very familiar. Um, I, uh, when Les first called me and we started talking, 
the first thing I did after we were done was get on and my laptop, start watching film. And uh, I told the offensive coaches and the full staff today, uh, you know, when you go through a season and you're not happy with it, you think sometimes you're a long way off and you're not. With the naked eye, you're not. And that's what I saw. I saw a group that with some things to change up technique wise or to change up some scheme things that uh, we're going to, we're going to get this done. I have no doubt in my mind. Uh, and so when I looked at the film, that's what I saw. And, uh, you know, I, I looked at all positions. I didn't look just at the quarterback. I looked at the line, the tight ends, the receivers, running back. I mean, I, I was studying, I was studying for a long period of time. And, um, uh, that's what excited me, excited me to be able to come here and work with less, for less. And it also excited me to hear what the staff was all about. And it excited me of what I saw on film. I'm excited to get in and, and start this process. Coach, what are, the, uh, what are, what are both the, uh, the challenges as well as opportunities in coaching up a group that is so young? Well, I think that uh, I, I love coaching young guys. I mean, I love, I love their uh, excitement, their enthusiasm. I talked to Jalen last night. That kid had me. I was already, ju you know, jumping for joy. That kid had me even more excited, like, just to listen to him. And uh, so that's what youth does to you. Youth excites you. And youth, uh, you know, pushes you harder, pushes you stronger, more, and, and all that. And uh, so I'm not worried about youth. Uh, you know, they'll play. We're, all we want to do is we want to play uh, great football technique-wise, scheme-wise, and effort-wise. And uh, we're going to get that. And a lot of times young guys are easier – they're easier to get going that way than sometimes older guys are. So I'm not really concerned at all. Can you give us kind of an overview of your offensive philosophy and how you like to play? Score more points than the opponent. No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be funny, but uh, um, you know what? Um, in all the offenses I've coordinated, we never had a, a set offense. We never did. And we're not, we don't have one right now here. We're not going to have that. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to take our time as coaches. We're going to talk about the players. We're going to talk about their strengths, what they can do, and get to know them. And then we're going to build that system. And as we go through spring ball, there'll be things that we really like, and there's going to be things that, uh, no, we got, we got to move on from that. We got to change that. And so that's part of the growing process and building an offense. But I've never, ever had the same offense from one year to the other. Never. Like, it changes. Your players change. Schemes change on defense that you have to go against. All that changes. And if you don't change, you're going to be left behind. And so uh, that's, where we'll, that's where we'll start. And I'm excited. I've met with every coach on offense individually and let them know that this is not my offense. This is the Kansas offense. And the Kansas offense is going to be all of us together working as a unit, working as a team to succeed and help win football games. And that's what we're going to do. Two quick questions for you. Oh, one, are you anticipating calling plays uh, in your OC tenure here? Am I anticipating what? Uh, play calling. Will that be part of what you do, play calling? Will I call the plays? Yes. Yeah, sure. Yep. And yep. then, two, will you be the quarterback's coach too, or has that not been decided yet? No, I'll be the quarterback coach. I've, uh, I've coached them numerous times in my career. Uh, my first coordinator job was at – Fort Hayes State here in Kansas, and uh, I coached the quarterbacks and coordinated the offense. We led the country in passing, passing, and we had a thousand-yard rusher. And uh, then at Tennessee, I had the quarterbacks. I also was floating a little bit from quarterbacks to line back and forth a little bit, being around both of them. And then when I went out to San Diego with uh, Mike Martz, who is a quarterback, in my opinion, mastermind, uh, I coached the quarterbacks for him. So. Uh, my whole career has been a mixture of different positions. I've coached tight ends. Uh, early in my career, I coached all the skill because we didn't have a lot of coaches at the Division II level. And, and, and then I feel like that made me a better football coach. So uh, 
I study the game hard, and I, I want, and when I coordinate, I want to know what every player's doing, everything. I want to know every step. I want to know hand placement. I want to know eyes. I want to know finish. I want to know everything about anything. And same thing with a pass route. I want to know exactly their steps, sinking the hips, arm exaggeration, eyes on the defender. I mean, everything that comes with a, with a pass route. So I, I know I want to know everything that's going on because when Coach Miles walks in and says, hey, uh, on this play, what happened? I want to be the guy that, that says this is what happened because that's what I'm in charge of. Hey, Mike, hey. you took over Indiana. Or you, you went to Indiana, basketball school, kind of a rebuild. Is there anything you can take from going to a place like that and transitioning it to Kansas? You know, I don't, I don't look at uh, – I know Kansas, great tradition here in basketball. I mean, going back to the Fog Allen days and the Peach Basket and all those good things. I wasn't around for that, by the way, but I, <laughs> I, I know of it. And, uh, you know, I grew up in the state of Indiana. I uh, grew up with – when Bobby Knight was the basketball coach in Indiana, and, you know, Indiana's thought of as a, a basketball school. And I don't, I don't look at schools like that as a coach. Um, we, we, hey, I'm happy to be at Kansas and our basketball team is a great program and has always, always been a great program. And you know what? That helps with football recruiting. That helps with the excitement of fans. That helps with the, the confidence in our players, knowing where we can get to. So I don't, I think that's all an advantage. And, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we went at it at Indiana. Uh, Tom Allen took over. Uh, he knew where he wanted that program to go, and it did. And just like Les, I, I, what I love about Les is he hasn't panicked here. He hasn't panicked. Some people would panic and go all of a sudden go, oh, my gosh, we got to go get a full class of junior college kids or whatever. He hasn't done that. He's staying the course. That's exactly – Tom Allen took over a better program at that point than what Les did. But yet – Tom Allen is staying the course year by year by year. And we played a lot of young kids that really now are, they're reaping all the benefits from now. So uh, I see so much similarity in what we were going through at Indiana and now what Coach Miles is going through. And what I love is neither coach panicked and they're not going to panic. They're staying the course. You're going to take some lumps. You're going to get hit in the head a couple of times. That's okay. Stay the course and you'll finish the way you want to finish. Hey, Coach, uh, Matt Tate from the Journal World here in town. Welcome to Lawrence, first of all. Um, I just wanted to ask you how much – what your conversations with Les were like about what he wants to see from the offense and, and his input and how you guys might work together in, in building that. I know you just said it's everybody, but, but did you have many conversations with Les about what he wants to see from, from this offense? Well, yeah, um, we, we talked, I mean, we talked every day and we talked at great length. I had a lot of questions. He had a lot of questions and really what we want to do is on offense is to keep the chains moving and win the time possession that way and score points. I mean, it's not turn the football over. We cannot afford to turn the ball over. And I mean, it's the general picture. We talked about personnel, like, you know, right now today, I don't know what our personnel will be. We might be 11 personnel. We might be 12 personnel. We might be 21 personnel. That's obviously meaning how many tight ends and backs you have in the game and all that. I don't know yet. Like, we're going to put our best personnel out there to win football games, whatever that is. And so that is to be determined. And uh, so that's, that's what we talked a lot about was, was like, and I, and I talked to him more about the personnel, like, Talk to me about the offensive line. Talk to me about the quarterback. Talk to me about the wide receivers. Uh, you know, talk to me about every, every position on the offense. And then we talked about coaches. Like, he loves the coaches. And that was another convincing part of this to me. And uh, so, again, we were talking about how we we're going to go about this. Like, uh, I told him, you know, like, you know, I have a certain system for formations that I think are really easy to learn for kids. And I think that's part of the formation system is you wanna have an easy formation system to learn. So a kid walking in as a freshman can learn right now, bang, this is easy to learn. And that's what I want in our system is to be player friendly in the learning part of it. Because if a kid knows what he's gonna do, he's gonna play fast. 
the kid that doesn't know what to do, he's not going to play fast. We want to play fast. And that's, you know, we went through a lot of talking that way and we were all, we were in agreement on everything. And uh, I just, it was refreshing to talk football with him again. It was refreshing to hear his, where he sees this program now, because where he sees it is where I saw it. And uh, that was all important to me. Yeah, you heard him say he's been chasing you for four years. What, how'd he catch you? What, what, was the, what was the big thing? You know, uh, it was timing, I think. And um, it, I tell you what, it meant a lot uh, for him to, to want me. I mean, it means a lot to you, any person, right? I mean, uh, so it felt great that way. But, you know, I just – I don't know. It was, uh, it was just the right timing uh, for me. I know, I think one time it was when I just had just gone to Indiana. I didn't feel like I could leave after a month or two or whatever it was. I don't even know, but I just didn't feel like I could leave at that time and stuff. But um, it, it's not only him wanting me, I've always wanted to work for him. So it's not like, you know, I'm playing Mr. Hard guy or tough guy here, not getting caught. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, I, I wanted to work for him, and it just really was kind of the timing of everything, and uh, the timing was right, uh, and I, I couldn't be happier. I, as soon as I saw him, I, you know, we had both big smiles on our face, like, you know what? It's happened. Here we are. Let's go. So, we're, we're both excited about it. Mike, when you were watching the film uh, immediately, like you talked about once, once Les called, what stood out to you just in terms of the players that you are inheriting on the roster? Yeah, I, I uh, you know, my eyes always, I guess, start in the offensive line. I always like to watch those guys to see, you know, how, how strong they are, how flexible they are, how much quick twitch they have to adjust, uh, things like that. And then I, I watch the coaching part of it. And uh, so, excuse me, that's where my eyes went to first. And uh, I've heard Lee already talk a little bit about the offensive line and what he saw, and I agree with him. I think he's going to be where we want to go. Uh, then I, I started looking at the running backs, watching them run the football, making decisions, uh, leverage, uh, making the right reads, cuts. Etc. Obviously, my eyes went to the quarterback and receivers and the throw game stuff. And um, you know, I don't, I don't ever like second guessing coaching. Coaching's too hard. I mean, it is. And I'm not here to ever like second guess anything coaching wise. Uh, but we will be different in our approach to the quarterback. Uh, we'll be more progression throwing, and uh, and uh, not reading the field, whether it's single high or double high or anything like that, it'll be quick for him to make decisions and move on. And uh, I feel like I've already talked to Jalen and I want to talk to the other quarterbacks about that, but uh, I think it's going to enable them to play fast and play confident. What, what are your expectations for the quarterback situation? There doesn't seem to be an obvious number one QB coming back. Well, I, uh, I'm not going to speak for less, but I'm, I'm sure, like, just knowing less that, you know what? Every position is under competition. You compete to get better. You compete to be the first string guy. And so I wouldn't see that, you know, any different at any position. I don't care if you're a three-year starter or two-year starter or what. you got to compete to win your job. And uh, so – um, you know, that's, again, that we'll talk more about that as we get into personnel and things like that. But uh, I just know Coach Miles all about competing to win, and, and I'm sure that's the way it is. Coach Moore, thank you. we got Coach Grimes here uh, coming up next. Thank you very much. It's good to, uh, uh, I guess, meet you through the, uh, the cameras here. But uh, appreciate it. Look forward to working with every one of you. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Can I fit in the frame? <laughs> Howdy. 
Hey, uh, what, what have you kind of learned about your group and maybe some of the abilities of the players you have coming back from last year? Uh, just getting in. Uh, once, once me and Coach Miles talked and, and I kind of had an idea, I uh, started watching film on the guys. And um, ability-wise, it's there. It's there, and, and whether it was a breakdown and, and their mental capacity or the communication, whatever it may have been, like the ability, the physical ability of those guys, it, it, it's impressive. And uh, I've got an opportunity to watch a, a couple of workouts, just kind of sneak in and, and kind of peek through the window while these guys are working out, and they're working their butts off. And they have the physical ability, they have the, the attributes that I'm looking for. Um, go back and watch the film last year, we did some good things up front. We just got to be able to consistently build on that and, and let these guys go out and play fast and play, play with confidence. So I'm excited. I, I think, you know, you've got returning starters coming back. You didn't lose very many. Uh, got three super seniors up front uh, with all this COVID stuff going on. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited about the room and, and, and building the confidence that we need to have to play a lot better this year. Hey, Coach, what kind of advantage is, is there to coming in with a new OC? You, you start at the same time he starts. Uh, how big of an advantage can that be? I think it's huge. Um, I mean, I, with Coach Darren being here, I was looking forward to working with him. But, but with Mike coming in and, and us kind of getting to rebuild, because you're not, you're not the one guy out of, you know, the nine or ten guys on the offensive side of the ball trying to catch up and learn everything as you go. Now – we get to kind of start over and start forming it as a group, which I love. And so we're all kind of learning at the same pace. It's not everybody waiting for one guy to catch up and, and, you know, going in and watching cut ups and be like, Hey, we're running uh, blah, blah, blah to the right, right here. And, and everyone else in the, in the rooms on the same page. And I'm sitting there going through the playbook, like, Oh, what, what did we call that? And, and so that part of it is, is obviously it's, it's good for me because it's level playing field. Um, either way is fine, but, but this way is ideal because everyone's learning at the same pace. You can go through and, and really go through the, the intricacies of the offense and, and answers you have for everything. And it's not just assumed that someone, you know, picks it up and knows it. Like we actually go through and, you know, if they're going to bring Sam Fire from the field and play cover one behind it, what are we going to do on this play? And, and all of us are on the same page. That way when we go into spring ball and we're installing all this stuff, Everyone's speaking the same language. So I think that's huge. Hey, Lee, I've, I've talked to a couple of recruits down in that college station area that already know you. Is that, is that an area you're, you will recruit? And how will your past ties there help you in that area? Well, the, the whole state of Texas, I think, is big for me, you know, just being a Texas boy um, and, and playing in the Big 12. Uh, I mean, college station is, is obviously near and dear to my heart. Uh, it's been a lot of Spent a lot of my time there. Uh, let me think about it. Five years in college plus four years. Uh, I mean, so nine years, almost 10 years in, in the College Station area. So I've got to know a lot of families down there. Um, and it just so happens that some of those families have 16, 17, 18 year old guys that, that are that are pretty dang good at football. Uh, but I will be in the College Station area, dipping down into Southeast Texas. Uh, for my, my, my local area, my, my actual area. And then um, once we identify offensive linemen and, and I, we identify them as a staff that those are guys we want to go after, I'll go anywhere in America to find them. So. And one last question. You knew Josh Ergel previous before this. What kind of role did he play and what did he tell you about the program to get you in there? Well, Josh has a huge advocate of left smiles and he really didn't have to be because when I was getting recruited out of high school, Les Miles was, was the Oklahoma State. He was at Oklahoma State. He was actually the first program to offer me. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, I'll tell this story some other day, but going up there on my first recruiting trip and, and getting to meet with Les. So I was already a huge fan of Les. And uh, so Josh really didn't have to, to build that part up of it. Uh, but, but the camaraderie of the staff was big. And Josh was, that was one of his major selling points. Like it, it's almost like a family feel atmosphere around here. And, and uh, so that, that was a big sell for me, you know, having a wife, having, having a little one deacon. Um, so we, we want to be a part of that family atmosphere. And, and Josh really, besides the family atmosphere, was, was more of like the personnel, like, hey, we got good kids. We can win here at Kansas. And, you know, being with him for three years at East Texas Baptist and building that program from the ground up, 
and, and kind of going through the growing pains of going three and seven, going four and six, and then that third year turning it around and winning a conference championship, uh, he knows the work that needs to go into it. And he knows that the foundation's been set. As Coach was saying earlier, there's no panic here. The foundation's set. We're going to keep building it the right way. And when you do that, you build lasting success. Coach, speaking of, speaking of foundation, um, could you address uh, – uh, is it fair to say that the offensive line needs to be a foundation of any continued growth that uh, everyone at the program wants to see with this team? Do you guys need to lead the way? Absolutely. Uh, you look at any successful team in college football and football period, and you look to the guys up front. Uh, they got to be able to protect the cue when we're throwing it. They got to be able to protect the, the running back or the other ball carriers when they're getting the ball. Um, so obviously that's going to be a foundation piece. One of the biggest things that I tell my guys all the time, uh, whether I'm recruiting them, whether they're here, if you can run the football and you can stop the run, there is no game. The game's over. If they cannot stop you, they cannot defend our run game, okay, and our defense shuts down their run game, there is no game. The game's over. So obviously up front, we got to lead the way. We got to be a much, much better than we were this past year. And I'm excited for it. I've never backed down from a challenge, and I'm looking forward to this one. When, when you were evaluating the O-line from last year, uh, as you were kind of maybe familiar, familiarizing yourself with everybody, was there anything you noticed that you kind of identified as, hey, this is a problem area that we really need to address? Uh, I don't really want to single out any position. I think as a whole, we just have to get better. And probably the number one thing is everyone being on the same page. All five of the, you're, you're, you're a special group. You're the only group on the field where five guys have to work as one. And if one guy's confused, one guy's not in that group, the whole group's going to look bad. Um, so we together as a group have to grow together, okay, and, and become one cohesive unit, okay, that kind of runs the, runs the show and leads the charge for our offense. Anything else, Coach Ryan? All right. Thanks, everyone. I'm excited. Can't wait to meet you all in person and rock chop. Thanks, Thank you, Coach. coach.